But to be honest, I've had my seasons where I'm like, oh man, I wish I could just get rid of all the goats. Hey guys, this is Megan from You Go To Be Kidding. Today we're out here with the goats and we're gonna talk about, should you consider getting dairy goats? So join us, um, I've got some reasons for and against keeping these guys. And I wanted to talk you through what has made us decide to keep them um, and whether you should get some for your homestead too. So reason number one is of course the milk. Uh, raw milk is fantastic. It has all kinds of health benefits for you if you haven't already switched to raw milk, um, but goat milk. So sometimes people will say that it is goaty um, and I don't know if that's a, a different breed or if that is milk handling practices, but with our mini La Manchas, they get the higher butter fat content that they get from the Nigerian dwarfs um, and their milk is excellent. It is crisp and clean. Uh, we drank raw cow's milk for years and you know it gets the variations of in the spring it gets really grassy if they happen to get into some onions you can really taste it and so you know we're used to it but the cow's milk um, the flavor different definitely varied um, and it wasn't always the favorite especially with the kids but our goat's milk um, after the first couple weeks sometimes there's a little bit of variation in those first few weeks when we start milking but other than that our milk is so good and so consistent and so creamy and smooth. Um, it is legitimately the best milk I've ever had. I don't just drink it because I happen to have goats. Um, we all genuinely like it and we've let friends try it and they've all been convinced. So anyway, don't let goat milk turn you off. Um, if you've had bad goat milk from the store, uh, try it from a local farmer. Um, if you didn't like the milk you got from a farmer, maybe try a different uh, breed. So again, the Nigerian dwarfs have that really high butter fat content. Um, and these mini La Manchas are half Nigerian dwarf, but the La Mancha gets us more milk. So I'm getting more milk out of my goats than a Nigerian dwarf, uh, but it tastes fantastic. All right, so reason number one why you would not want goats is goats can be really mischievous. Um, you can see we use these electric nets um, and this has saved us a ton of trouble. I really like them, uh, keeping them hot at all times. The goats know when they're off. They can kind of sense, all animals seem to be able to sense when they're on or off. Uh, and they'll push through it if it's off. So making sure that you keep it hot and that you are just prepared that they're smart enough to be trouble and dumb enough to not be like easy to deal with. So uh, we really do love our goats. The does have learned the routine of coming into the barn each morning uh, and going back out, but setting that routine and getting them used to that took a lot of time uh, and a lot of frustration of all the goats trying to get in the stall. Um, we haven't had too many troubles with them getting out of fences because we use electric net. Uh, but man, if you have physical fences and you have a weakness, they will exploit it. So we're actually in our barn pasture um, and this, we have, um, I think it's the welded wire fence, not the woven wire fence. And they just rub on it and rub on it. And they totally popped a few of the welds and have a big hole and they know how to get out. And once this one gets out, they all do. Uh, so goats are mischievous and you have to be prepared for that. Um, it's not, it's not that much trouble, but they're not just going to be put in your yard and forget about them. You've got to pay attention. You've got to make sure you have good gates and good fences. And then these guys can be a lot of fun. They are really fun that they interact with me and they want to be pet. They come up to you, but they'll nibble on you. And if you're trying to work on one, they will get in your way and jump on you. And that can be, you know, either a blessing or a curse. Reason number two for getting goats. Um, the benefit of them is they can be excellent at clearing brush and forest areas for you. Um, you'll see this fence behind me and there was a tarp here because we're trying to keep a baby goat and we've had to, this fence here does not have like any wire netting or anything behind it. Um, so right now we actually have the electric fence all the way around so they could climb through it and it doesn't matter. Um, but they have cleared this whole section. We actually could not see this fence, all this kind of tree and vining. There's a lot of multi-flora rose and some other vines in here. And they have cleared all that and all down this fence line, um, all of these bushes and trees. We need to actually come in here and clear it all out. Um, but I'll show you uh, some of the vine, like the 
stumps, I guess you would say, like the branches of the vines are just crazy and there's a million of them. Uh, so goats can be hugely helpful for clearing brush. Reason number two against goats. Um, parasite management can be a beast. Goats, especially in Middle Tennessee or any wet, humid area, uh, is gonna be trouble. If you live in Arizona in the desert, if you live you know, anywhere where it is hot and dry, then you'll probably have a lot better luck with goats or sheep. Um, but where it is hot and humid, parasites thrive. And so that is just part of the management. Um, it's not that big of a deal. It's been fine, but it is a pretty steep learning curve. So we have uh, used herbal wormers. We use Land of Havila uh, worming powders. And I have taught myself how to do a fecal egg count with a microscope to monitor that that herbal wormer is actually working. Uh, I have to get familiar with what the signs of parasite load look like and learning to do FAMACHA scores on their eyelids. So there's a whole lot of stuff that you would be willing to learn and look into. So parasite load is actually the main reason why we use these electric nets. Uh, they poop on the ground, the eggs hatch and climb up on the grass and get re-ingested. And so if you can break that life cycle, you can get a huge step up on uh, parasites. So we uh, move them around. We do not let them come back to the same ground for at least a month. Uh, the longer, the better. Um, I feel like I've gotten conflicting information, like 21 days is the life cycle, but then I've seen anywhere up to 60 days. So it kind of depends on the time of year. We actually struggle with the goats because they don't want to be in a main pasture. Now this pasture is working for the bucks because there's so many weeds in here. You can kind of see all the stuff that's not grass. Um, but even this is not ideal. Uh, and uh, we had to separate the bucks because they started getting too interested and I'm not quite ready for a breeding season. So we've got these boys out and that's, that's part of the management as well. Keeping the boys separate from the girls and parasites. But these electric nets are a huge blessing, but they can be really tedious too. It takes a lot of work to move them. Uh, you have to have quite a few to make your job easier. You can do it with fewer nets, but then it gets more frustrating, especially trying to get around forested areas. Again, these guys don't want to be on plain grass. So the sheep can move super easy right around a, a grass pasture, just little square to little square. These goats want to be in the forest and it's much harder to make perfect squares around trees. All right, reason number three that you should keep goats is um, if you are doing dairy goats, you have to get baby goats. <laughs> yeah, I mean, um, and cedar back there is one of the does we kept this year and baby goats are so much fun. There is nothing cuter than some goat kids running and jumping around <laughs> and chewing on you. Uh, these adults are being, <laughs> being funny too. Hey goats, goats, hi, you keep tickling. <laughs> <laughs> oh, goats can be a lot of fun. Uh, and so kids each spring is not only fun and cute to your farm, but it also means some income for your farm. So you can sell baby goats. Um, it depends on your area, what the market is like. It also depends on if uh, they're able to be registered. Does usually get more than bucks. Um, if you happen to have a really good lineage buck, you might be able to get a little bit more for a good breeding buck. But um, it's pretty important to be honest about the quality. Really, Tansy? I'm the scratching post now. Hi. <laughs> oh, thank you. Uh, it's really important to be careful with bucks. Uh, make sure that you really have a good quality buck um, and that you're not selling lower quality bucks as breeding bucks. It's better to just sell them as pets um, and be honest about that. But it brings in some money, uh, which always is a blessing. Uh, because stuff around here always costs a lot of money. So uh, we were able to buy several extra electric nets with the money from our kids sales this spring uh, and that helped make management this summer a lot easier. So the third reason that you might not want to get goats uh, kind of relates to the other ones in terms of the learning curve and that is their minerals. So um, we just use a loose mineral from Redmond. Um, <clears throat> the dog is really interested in the camera. Um, 
but even that is not just straightforward. So uh, you have to look up whether your area is deficient in selenium or not. Uh, selenium is vitally important for reproduction, making sure the babies are healthy and that they get pregnant in the first place. So we supplement with a selenium 90 salt. Um, then there's copper, which we talked about in some of our other videos. Our property seems to be pretty low on copper. Uh, we've been dosing with a copper bolus every three months or so. And then there's all sorts of other minerals as well. And it's just kind of um, part of the learning curve. Again, the minerals are probably the easiest thing to manage. Uh, it's not difficult, but it kind of feels like the most mysterious. It's not like the goats can tell you which ones they're low in. Uh, you have to guess with the selenium. Um, you wouldn't see signs until you had unhealthy babies, which would be uh, heartbreaking. And so it's just kind of, are you willing to put in the work and the research to learn about the different things that the goats need uh, and find the different products? Do you have local people that you can get help from? Do you know a goat farmer? Uh, if you go to buy goats, will the person you buy them from help you learn what it takes to manage them and what has worked for them on their farm? But even that might not be the same as your farm, even if they're local. So. So this has been a lot of fun. We uh, got this pile of wood chips delivered and then decided to put the goats here because of that fence line. And the goats love just hanging out on the pile. They play king of the hill, but then they just love to lay there too, which is funny. It's probably warm, which I guess I'm surprised feels good in the middle of the summer, but it's been a lot of fun. So the question is, should you get goats? And really the answer comes down to why do you want them? If you want goats for milk to provide your family with a source of good clean milk then yes but you also have to know that it's going to be a bunch of work to raise them right um, well to, to manage parasites well you're going to need to move them around and that's going to require some infrastructure to take care of them you're going to have to be willing to learn and kind of become a little veterinarian if you just want goats to clear brush for you um, or to mow your lawn, you might be sorely disappointed. Uh, the clearing brush works, but you have to have quite a bit of force to move them around. Uh, if they're eating up, that really helps with parasites too. So um, moving combined with they have something always to eat up, but they've only been in this spot less than a week and they've already cleared out all the stuff they can reach. So we have to move them to a new spot. So how many spots of forest do you actually have? Or do you have a section that's actually big enough that they could eat on it um, and it could regrow that you would be able to leave them there for an extended period of time? I think sometimes people don't realize how much animals can eat how quickly. So uh, they're not gonna mow your yard for you. They browse, they do not mow. Even the sheep are only medium mowers, uh, but these goats, you know, they do love to eat. It's just, do you have the right food for them? What are you guys doing? So whether you get goats or not, the decision is up to you. I just want you to be prepared. We have loved having them, but to be honest, I've had my seasons where I'm like, oh man, I wish I could just get rid of all the goats, um, but I don't want to lose the milk. So it, it depends. Do you want milk? Then go for it. Um, find somebody that can help you learn and start small. Don't get a million of them. Uh, they add up quick. Um, and the more you have, the harder it can be to manage. So hope this has been helpful. I hope to encourage you. I don't want to discourage you from getting goats, but I'd hate to see you get goats and be super unprepared for them. So uh, thanks for watching. We appreciate your time and we'd love to hear any stories about getting goats uh, or any questions you might have down below in the comments. Thank you.